Hi, today I'm gonna be trying to diagnose faulty memory chips on AMD video cards. These are 7970 Lightning and 6970 Lightning. Uh, both of these cards have, at least visually, uh, memory related problems. And the uh, problem is that for AMD cards, uh, there is no support from Matt's mods because it's NVIDIA, to NVIDIA only tool. As such, uh, we would have to use either a lot of the GPUs, the server, or some of the Linux scripts that have been created by the community. And yes, that will be a one option. However, it doesn't work for me because whenever I try one of those diagnoses, it just locks up the system. So it's kind of useless for me. As such, uh, I'm gonna have to use different route, and in this case, I'm gonna go the hardware way. As in, I'm gonna try to isolate each uh, memory chip individually until I figure out which uh, chip is causing my problem. And, uh, well, you have pretty much only two ways to do this. Either you remove the memory chip altogether and then put it back, which is kinda inefficient. Or, other option is you skew with its uh, power, uh, power supply voltages, or to be more precise, its reference voltages. Uh, GDDR5 memory chips have two references, one of them is reference D, other is reference C. Reference D is for data lines, uh, and the reference C is for command and address. Uh, voltage reference D uh, can be generated either on the PCB, or it can be generated internally in the chip, so it doesn't have to be very. It do, it won't be very reliable to search for reference D because it might not be even there. While reference C is always generated on the PCB, and it is created from uh, dividing uh, voltage from voltage uh, sorry, from memory voltage rail and ground. So. Basically, what we can expect is on back of each memory chip, we will have a pair of two resistors, potentially a capacitor, and this will be connected to voltage reference C. And if we, uh, what we can do is simply pull this re voltage reference C low. That means we connect it to ground through a resistor, and that will cause the memory chip to freak out. It will not be any. It will not be causing any uh, permanent damage. It will simply freak out the chip until we unshort it or reset the video card. Let's show that on a data sheet real quick. All right. Uh, this is a BGA ball out for GDDR5 uh, memory chips. Um, out of uh, these 170 balls, we are only interested in this one, which is voltage reference C. As you can see, it's on one side only and approximately in the middle. Um, now uh, that we know what the BGA pinout looks like, we're gonna check on actual data sheet for video card and see how it's being uh, generated. So let's search for voltage reference C, J14, J14, and 14, that matches for us. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is uh, connected to two resistors and a capacitor uh, and one of those resistors is connected to ground and other one is connected to voltage rail so exactly what uh, we were expecting and this capacitor is just simply for smoothing out the output of this uh, resistive divider and yeah basically what we're gonna do now is try and find this uh, junction right here uh, that we can see Oops. and uh, this is gonna be our point for pulling uh, down and let's have a look also on a uh, board view uh, this is random uh, i believe 7850 gpu so let's take one of the memory chips and zoom in Okay, voltage reference C is right over here. Let's see what it's connected to. Bottom, and yeah, it's connected to three components, one of which is a capacitor and two resistors. Yeah, MVDD, that's a vo uh, memory voltage rail and ground. So, perfect. Uh, we just need to search for this kind of pair of components on our graphics cards and simply mark them with a marker or something. Once we have marked them all, we can uh, start poking the GPU while it's running. I'm gonna just use multimeter with uh, regular resistance mode. Uh, okay. Ground, so I don't have to hold it. And now let's check uh, our memory uh, memory rail resistance. Okay, 130 ohms. 
pretty normal. And now we start with the, our first memory chip, which is around here. And actually, you should be able to see the stitching from Vias. Hopefully, yes, you should. So, here's first pair of resistors. Let's start with those. Okay, 190 ohm. Also, okay, so it's a junction. This is 130 ohm, so that's memory. Oh, sorry, memory voltage. And this is also okay. Uh, so both of these are connected to memory voltage on this side. That means it is not our divider. Next two are right across. So let's see. Let's see. Come on. Okay, 170k. Uh, sorry, 1.7k. This one. Also 1.7k, that's looking like our junction, ground, and VMEM. Okay, so this is our uh, voltage divider for our first memory chip. And uh, also, hopefully you can see it, there is also a test point uh, from manufacturing, so I can use the test point and I don't even have to touch uh, those uh, resistors. Yep. Okay, so that's our first memory chip. We can continue to the second one, which is right over here. And I see also at this point right here. Let's start with it. Oh yeah, you cannot see. Yeah, 1.7k. So that's our junction, like with the previous one. Yeah, that's the first resistor. Okay, let's check the other side. Ground, okay, and oh, okay. there, and VMEM, okay. So this is our second voltage divider, and like this, we'll continue searching across the whole card. In case of the 7970, I won't even continue because it has test point on each memory chip, so it's fairly straightforward. And we can move on to 6970, and we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, let's connect the ground again. Check for uh, VMEM resistance, so we have reference. 16 ohms, okay, there is a chip probably shorted because I believe this is Hynix card, so that's way too low. Uh, but let's not focus on that now uh, and search for the uh, dividers. Okay, so first pair I see on the edge in the middle of the back of the chip is this one. So let's see. Ground. Beam. Wow, that was that was quick. And this, yeah, also 1.6 to 1.7k. Uh, so yeah, this is our voltage divider for voltage frequency on this chip for 6970 and I'm gonna continue searching for the rest uh, of them so I know which points to pull down afterwards. As you can see I've connected the GPU through a riser so it's easier to access um, and yeah I have put just a cooler on it so it doesn't overheat too quickly, display output and that's it. Uh, other than that, here we have a resistor, well in this case trimmer because I'm out of resistors, connected to ground on one side and the other side is connected to this probe, so I can uh, precisely probe it. Um, keep in mind this resistor is around 500 ohms, you can use 470 or 560 ohm, depends of course on your voltage divider resistors. Uh, if they were high resistance, I would suggest to use also high resistance on this side. But yeah, let's skip that and I'm gonna show you what the GPU outputs in BIOS as it is currently. And then we're gonna start disabling memory chips. All right, uh, this is our default state. That's how the GPU is normally. Um, and now we start shorting the memory chips. So, chip number 12, let's freak you out. Okay, chip number 12. Uh, chip 11, where are you? Here, that's chip 11. Chip number nine, uh, sorry, 10. Okay, that's our number 9, number 8, number 7, 
number six. Cool. Let's reboot. Well, restart the system. You have to uh, cold pause, by the way. Otherwise, uh, the GP will not pause after this. So turn off and turn back on. And if you have Aces motherboard, then use retry button. Okay, that's number six. Uh, number five is this. Come on, the proper artifact. Yeah, no. And uh, now number what was it? I forgot again. Okay. Oh, that was number four. Okay. Uh, number three. Oh. Okay. This is number three. Number two is this one. Oh, come on. The proper artifacts. Oh, is it any better? Yeah, okay. That's our number two. And the last, the last one is chip number one. Okay, so this is number one. And that leaves us, since this line was changing only with the last three chips, or the first three chips, uh, we're gonna reboot again. Now that we have cleared our GPU again, uh, we can continue. And now that we know the last or well, first three memory ACs are directly related to these lines, we are gonna try to figure out which one of these uh, chips it is. I have suspicion it's the one uh, directly between core and PCIe slot, but let's try out and see so, chip number one. Okay, so chip number one is only half of, uh, sorry, a left half of the section. Let's go to chip number two. Hmm, this one seems to be covering the whole partition or the uh, section okay let's check chip number three ah this one is only influencing the right side of the partition so maybe it's not the memory chip number one as i thought maybe it's the chip number two after all because only the chip number two let's double check uh, yeah, only chip number two affects the whole part. Yeah, that gives me a pretty decent idea. So I'm gonna conclude here that if the chip number two isn't our culprit, then I'm just gonna replace all three memory chips and be done with it. 6970 plugged in, pretty much the same setup as before. And let's start with it. Well, this is our default state, so we can start with chip number 8 and proceed from there. Huh. Okay, seems like chip number 8 uh, does this stripe, so <laughs> we have started with the correct chip actually. Uh, let's proceed to chip number 7. Okay, so chip number seven seems to be fine. Uh, chip number six. Okay, that one is also fine. And number five should be this. Number four. Okay, that's also good. Okay, number three is also good. And number two. Okay, so chip number two and chip number eight seems to be causing our problems on this video card. And let's also double check chip number one, just for a good measure. Yeah, chip number one seems to be okay. Well, we are done with diagnosing and I'm pretty certain about what, we, what memory chips we need to replace. Um, anyway, since I have been counting from 12 to 1 and 8 to 1, 
just to explain myself, this was chip number 12, this was chip number 1. And normally for A and D cards, you will count them as A0, A1, B0, B1, C0, C1, and so on. And on this one, it would be also A0, A1, blah, 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 blah. As you can see, I have marked uh, both memory chips that uh, have been causing our problems on 6970. Since all three memory chips on 7970 are related to one single column, I'm gonna uh, suspect chip number two for now because that one is only one in control of the whole column instead of just halves, while these two are in control of, in control of halves. Next time around, I'm gonna replace this memory chip and gonna see if it works. If not, then I'm gonna replace all three. While on 6970, it's gonna be a bit tricky because when I received this card, um, originally it had, it had only one stripe and it was caused most likely from channel D, uh, D1. While this one is new, so I'm suspecting there might be a bad batch of memory chips on this card. Or another option will be uh, that simply it broke uh, BGA connections, either the pads, balls, or pads on the PCB. And uh, if that's the case, it's not a big deal because I can just replace the memory chips and it will be fine. And if it was a bad badge, then I will have to replace all eight. Anyway, see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.